possibly we can make our voice heard as the Conrad Hilton. We'll be nominating uh, Hubert Humphrey, but anything we can do to uh, discourage them will be, I'm sure, wholeheartedly appreciated by most of the nation. So if you can get across, make your voice heard, it might possibly have some effect. There's 25,000 American guys have been killed. These people should be at convenience. That's right. They have, they have committed it. They have allowed it. And if they're on your side, they don't mind it. And if they're against you, then fuck them. The Randolph Street Bridge is open. Kill! 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 Hey, kill. Come on! Come on! Kill. kill! Come on! Come on, I'm over here! Kill! Shoot! Come on! Come on. Come on. Shoot the kill! Kill! Shoot the kill! Come on! Shoot! Kill! That's it! him! Get him!
And as many people as wanted to walk through. Okay, I left one. Just as they turned on. Stay in the line. Stay in the line. Stay in the line. Four breath. Four breath. Keep moving. Four breath. Keep moving. on 55th Street. If the march were to continue beyond 18th Street, uh, it would be going right through the heart of the Black Belt in Chicago, South Side of Chicago. They felt that this many people making, uh, uh, attracting, would attract quite a large number of black people. And they felt that perhaps, in my opinion, they felt that perhaps it would the march would swell to perhaps over 100,000 people, which is a crowd they feel that they could not control. Okay, Lieutenant. All right, go. Lieutenant, very slowly. Let's go. Oh, stop, Nicole! I'm sorry, Paul, but you're 
He must be some kind of sickness anyway, because if he's white, he can go out there and get a $15,000 a year job if he has something on the ball. Those 
those are the things you you uh, you put up with. It. In other words, you just uh, in other words you want to you seem to uh, avoid all that. In other words, you're staying away from trouble. You don't want to get in trouble, so you stay away from uh, from that, and you don't want to be involved in it. You don't fuck with the police, but we won't fuck with you. Yeah, put that on me. You believe that, three? Yeah, I believe it. Because if they get another man, shoot at them too. Did you ever see the police come around and crack black people's head for no reason at all? You haven't never seen that, huh? Because I don't got hit upside my head. What you doing that thing that you be hit upside there? You were wrong. But you didn't have to hit me. But have you seen black people got hit upside the head wasn't doing anything that you felt that was wrong? Well, I have yeah. them get up hit upside the head. I have seen that. If a motherfucker right. don't take care of himself, he a dumb murder. Yeah, you did? Take care of your own self. That's all you got to do. Am I driving? You know, the whole thing I say is, you know, I just seen the police, you know, crack a lot of people's head there for no reason at all there, you know. And you have I, cracked you know, a lot of people's head for no reason at all when we was growing up. Remember? Yeah, but that, that was a different time, though. Okay, now I'm telling you, now it's still the same thing. But I'm talking about the police, you know, crack people's head. But you care the about the police. You didn't care nothing about them, man. I'm not nobody. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 hey. See, um, black people have been demonstrating and going on for I don't know how long. And, um, you know, we've been getting our heads beat and whatnot. We knew what was going to happen when those folks went down there because we have seen the pigs on the scene. We know what he's like. We know what he's capable of. Just being a damn pig, oinking and beating and walking the streets. I'm sick of these damn pigs walking our streets. And so everybody gets uptight when a few hunkies get their heads beat. What did they do when we was getting our heads beat? So I don't even want to deal with why they got their heads beat, no damn walker reporting up, what other, whatever else that's going on. I just want to deal with black and black liberation. My scene is picking up my damn gun, and I'm a mother. Have my baby in one hand, my gun in the other, and walking up to some hunky, all hunkies, saying, I'm here, motherfucker, to get what's mine. Right on. You know, like all over the city of Chicago, each person like black power is doing its own thing, and another is Irish power, whatever you want to call it, you know. We're all people and all poor folks. Yeah. And like the Democratic Convention, you know, and they're uh, shortening their bill of sticks and that, and they seem, you know, they didn't care what kind of person you was. They worked on you with that thing. We realized a whole lot of like Dully and all we realized we're in the same boat. Power flows from the barrel of a gun. Oh, oh. Uh, did you feel that something had to be done about daily before the Democratic That's Convention? Right, man. That's right. When he put out that shoot, when he put out that shoot to kill, man, the man that just got power mad. He just didn't sit there and got so much power, man, until um, he worse than Hitler. I said to him very emphatically and very definitely that an order be issued immediately under his signature to shoot to kill any arsonist. Sure, everybody get a gun and go down the street and every dark one you see, shoot, you know what I mean? They're all evil, but uh, after it kind of calmed down and everything else, why, there was a different story to them. To shoot to main or cripple anyone looting any stores in our city. Isn't he, after all, the man who coined the phrase, good government is good politics? He does he believe, believe it. And he thinks good government includes the suppression of, uh, of the leftist dissent. Well, did it now. When they had this convention, about three of them thought, you know, when they put out that uh, shoot to kill order, you know what I'm saying? So his colleagues come up there and told him, say, look here, man, you got to modify this thing. So he goes and modifies, but still mean the same thing. But when they had this convention, they said, this is my city, and y'all can't do what y'all gonna do. So he figured that these black brothers is gonna start some of these things. So he gets these boys all hyped up, you know what I'm saying? You know, like you when you're playing football or something like that, you know how the coach keep coaching and tell you, say, well, look here, Jack, we got to do this and we got to do that. So naturally, Jack, when uh, this convention comes, these hippies and hippies come in, but they ain't no black folks. They don't care who they're there. They're going to whoop somebody. They got to whoop somebody. You know what you said? The police was there. The police, all this uh, military force was there for the black people there. Huh? That's right, man. But uh, we, 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 we was cool. We, we laid dead. We going to dig and see what's happening. 
But yet still, the police, they got to whoop somebody because cause they fired up. They just got to whoop somebody. They don't care who they whoop. And like when the white folks did, they said, they said, look here, baby. No, they tell this, look here, baby. He done fucked up because you whooping my kids. But uh, now, nah, you whoop them black folks, it's a shame. I don't want to, we wouldn't like to see you do it. But you you done fucked up now, damn, because you don't whoop down. You don't whoop my kids, baby. That's my man. He is stood, his lawyers, doctors, and so on and so forth. And uh, these, 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 these middle class, blues white folks, they going to college, they got dope. They folks got dope. Uh, people like us, we ain't got no dough. If we go to college, we got to go on, you know, an athletic, athletic scholarship and so on and so forth. So, uh, what did he do, Jack? Then he said, what did This is my country. He blocks off a whole neighborhood now. And people live there, they can't raise their windows. It's hot. They can't raise their windows. Now, what kind of shit is that? Huh? You know this, man, don't you? I just want to see that how, how far, you know, the your idea. Yeah, well, my what are you saying, man? Oh, it's fine. But Right here is the amphitheater, right in, right in here. All along here, and all these streets were blocked up. These are the little businesses that were complaining that couldn't get, in other words, they couldn't get in there to them. So after all, the success of a city is based on the total input. And conventions are valuable to a city basically for two reasons. One, of course, they bring money to the city, but also there's a, a fantastic exchange of ideas that occur at a convention. <laughs> we have. You think you know what we have. You don't know what we have. So what happened when they took you out of the police station? What my ass? The police were out there with this sign on their car. What that do we serve and protect? That's right, Dad. They serve us with them 38s and them shotguns and shit and protect the white folks. That's what they do. I know what the police are going to do, tell you. Look at I got my defense knocked out over here. With a big, big old ball of handcuffs. That's not gonna happen to me no more. Never. Never. If you're arrested uh, today in the near north neighborhood in a in a car that's two years old or older for uh, failure to make a left turn signal, you know darn well that every person in that car is gonna be yanked out of the car by the police officers. Uh, I understand that there's a police directive that in giving a ticket, the police officer is to approach the automobile and there is to be no request made to get out of the automobile. This directive is completely uh, bypassed in the areas that they want to um, rule by fear. When you come out, you got to come out with your hand out. Your hand out. I was coming down Dexon Boulevard one evening, and uh, the police put the light on, so I pulled over to the side. And uh, I got out of the car. When they got out of the car, you know, and uh, they came to me and they asked me for my driver's license. So I showed it to them, you know. And then they told me that I didn't have no tail light on the left side of the car. And so I said, so? You know, and so they said, well, uh, you know, you got to give you a ticket, you know. And I didn't want that, you know. And so for another thing, they had turned me around on the car start pushing all of my pockets and pat me down and everything, like I was a criminal or something, you know. And then this time I turned back around and told me to do that, you know, because they're going to arrest me, take me on down to the station. And then this time, he sprayed some little jab in my freeze face, you know. Hey man, at this time, was you uh, resisting arrest or anything? No, I wasn't res resisting no arrest. And he sprayed something in my face. The little old stuff they spray in your face. Mace? Mace. But then, uh, then it got next to me, you know, so uh, I was turning around to try to get my breath, you know, because the stuff is rough. And by this time, I've made for the game where, you know, try to get some out, you know, because this time a whole lot of people had gathered around. I was trying to get some out, and I couldn't get no air. Then they started shooting up in there with shotguns and everything, you know. And then by this time, they had called some... You know, this time a whole lot of police came around and had been standing up. And a little white rookie cop came out and hit me. And when he hit me, I didn't have no other choice but to hit him back. And when I hit him back, 
This time, five or six more was on me with rifles that hit me all in the what head. What were you doing when this rookie cop hit you? I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything. Oh, where does he come hit you for nothing then? Because he hit me for nothing. He called me, he said, you little black motherfucker, you, and then hit me. By this time, I didn't have no other choice but to hit him back. When I hit him back, another, another white cop hit me behind the head with a shotgun. I fell. And it was all over me. They had come from me behind the back. They took me on down to the station, and I talked to the man. You know, I said, why you want to do that? Then he gave me a whole lot of static down there. And then behind that, when I went to court, the judge said, told me that I didn't have no respect for the police and gave me 60 days in the county jail. The poor you are, the less you get out of it. In other words, the less respect you get out of it. Any courtroom you go in, any judge, colored white, pink, purple, any color he is, the less respect you get out of it. If you're poor, you ain't gonna get nothing. That's the reason I don't believe in that law. That law ain't nothing. That law ain't nothing. That law is for people with money. If you haven't got no money, you don't have no law. I don't have too much faith in the legal system at all. Legally, they have to lower the bond, but I don't think they're going to lower them enough as to where uh, they, well, they just can't lift that bread, you know what I mean? And uh, one particular mother I talked to last night, and she, I told her that the total bond was $13,000, and she started crying on the phone, you know, because uh, she, uh, you know, that, you know it's, it was impossible for her to raise any of uh, that uh, $13,000, because she got about four or five kids, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some cop might have gone in the court there and then said black panthers and that's the first he heard of it he's got panicked you know what i mean so he's better said the high bond or on the other hand they might the whole thing might be clear to everybody and they might be starting into their program already i kind of don't think they're that much together about it that's hard to tell and ain't no point to speculate about it really well you know uh this uh goes like this here if you're white, you're right. If you're black, stay back. We say an old song, Negroes name help name, poor white remains like a boosted train. You know, cats say, hey, yeah, right, I dig it, you know? And you say, like, all right, is, it, is it black cats who, who are, like, you know, stopping you and making you pay them off so on your way home from working in that crummy factory before you go to that bar where you cut each other up? No, man, it's like the man is making you tight. The man is turning you in on your wife. The man is turning you on your buddy on the line. And they're starting to dig it, but they always related to the black man. And they, and they, they got the racist thing about them, man. They don't dig the black man. Yeah. And you got to get them over this, man. And they can get over the hill when they fight with the black man for the common cause. That's out of sight. That's beautiful. If we can get you together and you together and me, we get all three of us get together. We ain't going to have nothing going on. If we can't get our heads together, I say, well, maybe I'm the one part about a building, you know another, and you know another. And when we get together, if all three of us don't go together, we can't build it. It's a class fight anymore. It's nothing more really a race fight. If, and they, but they don't realize it yet that it's a class fight. Some of them do. That could be the way it would be. Right now, I still think, I think the color is a factor. There, there are... Indians say, you know, from the time white men showed up here, we've had meetings with them and discussed things, that they've always taken things from us, and it's, you know, and, and things aren't going to change now, which they really haven't, and it's just continued on this way. They want a Gold Coast back here, even from, here's a picture on the wall, uptown out to regain its glory. And you can't do this with pig farmers and Indians off the reservation. You got to get rid of them. Because a high rise that they build here, you know, even like the 221 D3s, that one high rise will, you know, $9,600 for taxes on one high rise that replaces a couple of buildings. That's more taxes than a whole city block. And that's why, you know, poor people are uprooted. You should, you know, talk to the young patriots. They're just young street guys who are doing things. And What do we want to do? We want to stop getting hassled. We want to have our office. We want to do our thing without, you know, getting hassled by the cops. We want to get all together. So I sat in jail for two years, man. And what I is thought, telling me we got to get them and, I, and I thought, I did a lot of thinking, man. And, and the thinking is that, that there's a rich man, man. And a rich man all the time got to have a dog to kick, you know? And that's us, brother. That's us. We're the dog. We're the dog. He's kicking, man. Like my mother, she pays 30 rent for two rooms. She pays uh, 20 on Grove Street. And she's got 10 bucks left to get back and forth to work. And that ain't shit.
Okay, I want to fight, man, but I don't think that you can deal with the man on his terms. There's some times when you've got to, to go in, you know, you can say non-violent, and then up to a certain extent, you know, you have to use violence. You gotta use your wits, man. Everybody got wits. Right. Everybody got some smarts. Yeah. Gotta... See, one of the things that's good about about the young patriots is there's different kind of people in it other than southern. Yeah, you know, we just got we got Spanish, Indian, Italian, some blacks in it. Roberta. Right. Roberta's the cool head. Where's he come from? Cuba. He come. We even got a Cuba. Cuban. Cuban guy. Can't understand English, but you know he can talk anyway. You know. See, and they're all they're all interested in the problems they got here. You know, and, and they're, they want to change them. What we have to do now is pull ourselves together into a functioning group of people who can go out and rebel against them. Yeah, tell you what, man, get about 20 of us one night, we'll jump one cop, man, we'll tear them apart with our hands, man. And we'll put the fear of God in the rest of the sun. I do the same thing them kids. I'll give me a gun and put it on the phone. You think I'm bullshitting? The man died too, man. I'm hip, man. I, man, I, I get it. Okay, I just feel the same way we do, man. Somebody's dying, man. I don't give a shit what you want. That's right. It's the bourgeois motherfuckers kids. Yeah, one part, man. One that's got the green shit. Them are the same cats that are sending people over to Nam. What do they do? To die, but they're also sending people over to kill other people, man. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to kill each other. They got no say in what the fuck's going on, any more than we got any say in, see? I'm saying the cats are making bread in that fucking war, see? Yeah, that's okay, we go. To, we send our fucking troops to Nam because the cats are making the fucking arms in the government, man. The cats that are selling the bullshit, whatever they're selling it, you know, textiles, man. The cats that are building army bases are making bread, and they're tight with the cats in the government. And they're saying to the government, man, listen, man, to protect our investment, we got to keep the fucking South Vietnamese regime going, see? So that means, that means, it means they send over American cats to die over there, so they can make their fucking money. Our group, the United States of America, that little group, does not agree with the other group. It ain't agreement, man. It ain't agreement. No, it ain't, man. Now, like I, they want to blow them motherfuckers, man. I think they're gas, man. I dig the now, fuck out of Kong, man. man. Now, like they I think those motherfuckers got troops. all kinds of balls. Now, they want to pull our troops out of Vietnam. They don't want to. They do. Just, they no, they, they don't. Before, I heard it on the radio. They said before they would talk. Man, I hear a lot of bullshit in the radio. Radio the bullshit, bullshit, man. It's, it's do you, hey, bullshit. Do you think we should pull our troops out of Vietnam? Fuck yes. Yeah. All right. Now, say if we pull our troops out, they have got time to build their defenses against our country. And when we go back... What makes you think the motherfuckers want our country, man? If I don't want their motherfucking country... They want to take it. Who's they? The government. What the government? little group. What the American government? government and the Vietnam government wants to take it. They want power to take over our country. That's why they're fighting in the first place to see who gets more land. I don't I don't think it's a land thing, man. I think it's a money thing. Fuck the rest of that you shit. You buy real true honest friends with money that's... If you got money, you can you can buy a fucking shit if you want it, man. <laughs> I'm here. Money is something, man. Uh, like, like Jim says, man, you, you, with money you can buy a cop and I'm gonna beat on your ass, kill you, man. They're gonna get away with it. Yeah, but see, money is something, but can you, I mean, like, can you just got money and, like, if none of us bought us, can you buy us to be your real friends to protect you? If I can't and buy you, I can buy people to kill you. That's what you're saying. Fuck you. See, if I don't want to deal with you, I, I, I can wipe you out, man. If, 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 if he can't buy you, can, but he can buy people just like you. If I had a gun, I could wipe people out too, man. Oh, yeah, you're you gun carry is small, a gun. Your gun is small. Because your gun ain't organized like the pigs are. Your gun ain't organized like the army is, man. And the fucking pigs are shit, the fucking army shit, man. We got to get our power going. So we can fight for what we want against the people who do not believe about okay. what we want. That's I'm saying what the, the pigs don't believe. Are. I'm saying the pigs don't believe in what you want. The, the fucking pigs. That is not a. That is not an organization to protect people. That's a fucking racket to make money. Okay. What, what's everything else in the fucking world, man? What's this war for? The war is the same thing. A racket to make money. A lot of cats are defecting. A lot of cats are saying, "Well, I'd rather get high than fight your war." See, and they say, well, take me to the stockade. I want to go to jail. I don't want to get killed. See, like a black cat, like the Panthers now, getting the whole thing about, you know, Huey sitting in that chair with his, with his sword. He's not on an ego trip. What he's saying is, he's doing something so little, so little black kids can say, little when, I, right, when I grow up, I'm going to be a Panther, see? And see, white cats ain't had nothing to look forward to. They got no alternative. They know it gives us dignity, and we're going to fight, too. People fighting us, we can put up a fight ourselves. But I believe that we should really have united power. We shouldn't fight each other. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get people to come in. Like, I'm going with you tonight and talk to these people. 
I want them to come into our circle. Like he said, there shouldn't be little circles. It should be all one big circle of people fighting for the same thing. But we should go into their circle yeah, we as all, well, you know. We just go in together. When we say come into our circle, then it makes it a click again. As a direct result of that letter, uh, there has been a change, and we did get some publicity, and I gave uh, Bill an article that was written in the Tribune, which you want to can read. Okay, give it us direct credit for this change. I don't know you people, you people don't know me. I'm from the Young Patriots on the north side. You are, you people here are middle class whites. Oh, God, we've gone through this too much. <laughs> I'm tired of it, man. Just tell us what you don't like. We well, are really. Now, y'all think the cops are supposed to protect you and all this good shit. But we want to get all these people together so we can fight together. Y'all can join us. If well, not, y'all can fight it. We want proper housing for the poor people. We want proper jobs for the people that have no education to get jobs. The right payment. We want decent housing so people can live. People that's got nine children, so their father can't work. That's what we want. That's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. Yeah, but Johnny, you see, we have, we have two candidates who come here. One man is waiting here a long time. He has to speak. You know, he has well, I've been waiting all my life. I would like to amend the motion to uh, ask Johnny to come back at a future meeting and to discuss this matter as thoroughly as the regular point of the agenda. I well, this little light of mine, and I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everybody sing it. What we got to do is let it shine and know them as neighborhood fire, wherever we might be. Hey, that's a whole subject of thought of the night. Protect your neighborhood, protect your people. Show them you're together and stand up for what's yours. All right, let's go one more time. Yeah, y'all lose me, man. Hit it. <laughs> we shall not be and we shall not be moved like the tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. You've got to keep working on those people. You know, they're going to keep messing over as long as you just sit around well. I know that, you know, many people don't like this kind of talk. Maybe they just like to sit around and have a lot of fun. But you're going to have a lot of fun after you moved out and have to go back to the hill country or down on the plains of Missouri where you kick out into another slum and then you don't have no people with you. I know how it was when I first come to Uptown. All I was living here was a lot of high class folks that called me hillbilly. Man, that's a proud name to wear anymore. If you don't get organized more and more, if we don't get this coalition going, if we don't get the birth of people, and the young painters will build up more and more. We're not going to be able to do anything, I remember. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Say, I'll get the ball, the dog got the ball. The dog's chewing the ball.
some some the group that I will respect for their name and what they're trying to do. And because partly I understand it and I feel it. So everybody, these guys, young guys, including myself, got together and organized a march over the local police station who was protesting against this one cop who happened to be one of the most decorated cops in Chicago and also one of the biggest killers. Okay, what happened is this cop jumps up and says, look, son of a bitch and hillbilly, since I see you out on that street again tonight, so I'm going to blow your head off. We wasn't smart enough. We didn't know that, that we was going to be attacked by the cops <coughs> right away. But we were Like everybody broke up. Everybody went home. Everybody went to the local hangouts. That's when it happened, when they called us two or three at a time. We got our hands beat in. Cats got shot at, got run out of the neighborhood and everything else. You know, like this, this button here. You know, it's, it's got all colors. It's red, yellow, black, black, brown, whatever. If there was a coalition in Uptown, a different organization, getting together. I'd like to introduce Bob Lee, the section leader for the Black Panthers. Well, I don't have to tell my story. These brothers have already did it. We're all niggas the scene, right? Do you have any, any, any proposed plan to remedy all of these wrongs that are, are, are in existence now? Do you have some specific project that you can come to us and we can support? Or how can we help you to accomplish, as, as a community, how can we help you to accomplish whatever, whatever you want to accomplish? You help us in ways that we need it most at this moment, we're getting the place open. We've been there in different places trying to do, we can't do it. And in ways of, uh, if you got any doctors or lawyers or money, you know, to help us out. And uh, in return, what can we do for you, man? And what can we do for you? He's a nice man. We all should be right now trying to help these cats how to get their thing together. We need to go in the community and also get to keep the community together, man. You know, and see if they want it. I would like to know the Panthers feeling for Jews. Are they going to start this?
no good. For these brothers' sake, it's no good. Helping these guys is all very nice, but it's also very a lot of liberal bullshit. You've just played the great liberal game of being very interested in what's going on someplace else. I am tired, man, right. of every time people saying to me, we are nothing but goddamn white middle class son of a bitch is no good for Wait a minute. We are ready to do action now, if there is action now. A lot of you guys have got a lot of talk and knocking us fine. And I tell you, you've got a lot to learn. But if there's anybody who feels that in any way that they have been pushed by police, we will do what we can, action now, by going to see Brash personally, if necessary to arrange a march, if necessary to put it in Royco's column. Now what else can you do aside from shoot the cop? Well, if you've got a program or an answer other than criticism, tell us! This is poor people's power. And that's what this whole campaign of buttons all about that we've been passing around to people. People that want to take over and have a government for their self, that they'll be treated right. That's what it's all about. I want to introduce a man to come over tonight from another part of town, but he's fighting for some of the same causes we're to, uh, fighting for, and starts meeting all of them. So I'm going to introduce you to Bob Lee here and let him rap a little while. Bob. I'm a Black Panther. I'm a section leader of the Black Panther. This is Paul. He's a security man. This is Sister Ruby. Uh, we met with Junebug and his brothers uh, last Wednesday night, last week, at the Church of Three Crosses, where we both had a chance to rally, get together. Panthers are here, are here. Panthers are here. Yeah. For Uptown. Okay. For anyone who lives in Uptown, be brown, green, yellow, purple, or pink. But I'm saying Panthers are here, and you have to tell us what we can do, and what we can do together. We come here with our hearts open, you can't supervise us, where we can be of help to you. One thing we're going to have to do is put our heads together and figure out where we can help Uptown, help the people in Uptown. Right. And the thing is that I want everybody who's got any questions at all to speak them up and say them now. Who's here as concerned people? Who, who's here want to see this thing move? Right on. Well, the first thing we talk about now is how we're going to organize. You know, where are we going to organize? We almost right now, man, figure out like what we want. You know, what, what do we want? What do you want? What do you want, man? What do you want you know, in your community? What do you want here? Don't lay back on the cuts, man, and, you know, like, we're not moving, man. Are you, are you afraid of, you want to take berets off, man, or, or what, man? Uh, you, uh, propose that you do a lot of marching and things like no, that? No, sir. No, sir. The marching right. march seems to do more harm than do good. No, sir. No uh, march. No, sir. The thing that we're about here is that this is your community. This is your community. Let's move! You know, and we can't move without you. We can't move. We can't move without the people. Like on the west side, the south side, you have a uh, basic unity to start with. Uh, you have a full skin color. Right. Okay. But then the thing we got to deal with is concept of poverty, man. We got to be the color things. See? I mean, concept of the same thing, there's welfare up here, people on welfare up here, there's people that receive ABC. Right. You know, there's police brutality up here, there's rats and roaches, uh -huh. there's poverty up here. That's the first thing that we can, we, we can unite on. That's the common thing we have, man. And we can unite on poverty, and unite on the concept of poverty. You know, everything comes colored, man. Right on. <clears throat> Buildings not fit for dogs to live in, but humans having to pay $144 a month for the right? They sold, they sell the building off to new ownership. What we need is understanding among the people. Right on. Coalition between the people to stick together. Right on. Yeah and take them owners and put them over here in the lake somewhere. Right on. Right on. This man, this man right here, you know, the things he said, these are things we can start working on. We can start working on those very things. Get rid of the Urban Progress Center. Get the cats gonna get themselves together. Get rid of these little junky employment agencies, the cats I mean, these are things you can start working from, man. 
These are the things you can start working from. Ladies, stand up and tell us some of the hell you've been going through. I did something. Show me that granddaughter, Marcel. She wants to be Tell them what they're doing to Eddie out there. When we come out and how they talk to your mother and how they jumped yeah, on us down. Come on, don't be bashful. I talk too much. You all got to talk. Now's the time to talk. You don't want your kid to be raised up the jab you're coming through now. She wants it. I can tell. You gotta do something. Can't have only one or two leaders. No, please. Stand up. Just, just stand up. Gotta have the people do it. Can you do it? Come on. My uh, sister-in-law, she came up and said that the cops were out there fixing my brother, and we went out there, and there was uh, one of them cops were uh, sticking a knife in my brother's behind, just sticking me. I went up and I asked him what he was doing. He said, uh, it's none of your business. He told me to get out of there, asked me who I was, and I said I was his sister. And he told me to get the hell out of there. Well, she was cussing the cops out like that. She said, yeah, you know. Call up the police when nothing's going on and the police are going to come make it happen. They try to put your words in your mouth and make you put yourself in jail. But I want you people to stick together and I'll stick with black men and they'll stick with me and I know they will. We're going to do it our own way and that's all there is to right it. Right on, right on, your own way. I saw a Black Panthers movie last week. That points are real good. You got to pick up the gun, that's all. Right on. Oh, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of them coming down the street and kicking my damn head in for them. Nothing I ain't done. Bobby Hutton gave his life, man. The cat was 18 years old. Gave his life. And from that day on, Panthers moved up. Moved up for the black communities are concerned. From that day on, Panthers moved up because black communities knew, knew and felt what Huey was saying, but Huey went out and did for the people, what the people they wanted to do for the last 15, 20 years. He did to the, pe to, to the pig what Roger would like to do. Nobody's saying that, hey, we're not saying go out and off the pig, go out and start shooting the pigs. You know, but this way he did it. If it comes to that, I'm sure that one of these brothers are capable of doing it. We're going to stop this shit one way or the other. We have to fight with guns. Before you can do that, there's got to be some discipline. But I'm reacting to what I say you want to do. Okay. The first thing is discipline, man, before you can even control the pig. Or you're off you. You're off you, man. From here, you start out going into the community so the community know, man, what you're doing. Because, see, if the pig's off you, if you're off you, Roger, and you just, you just go in the funeral, man, you've been, you've been in the casket, and the people in the community don't even know you're dead. You've got to have a community back. The pigs, the police are protecting the landlords. If Roger run out with a Montau cocktail to throw one of these rat-infested buildings, to kill it. To kill it. To kill it. Somebody answer why. Why did why the man come down us like that? Why? I'm protecting people, they're about protecting property. Right. Right. You been to jail for, baby? You been to jail? Right on. So I'll tell you nothing but the pig. Once you realize, man, that your house is funky with rats and roaches, you know, same way a black dude's house is, you know, once you realize that, that your brother's been brutalized by the cops, the same way the west side and south side is, you know, once you realize, man, that you're getting inadequate, man, education in these high schools, the junior high schools over here, the same way the south side and the west side, you know, once you realize that you are paying taxes, right. taxes for the cops to whoop your ass, yeah. you're paying them. Yeah. You're paying them, man, for to whoop your ass. You're paying them to come in to beat your children. You're paying them to run you off the corners. You, and you're paying them to kill you. The deal from there. The same thing is happening on the south side and the west side. And if you can realize that concept of poverty, the concept of poverty, right. a revolution can begin. Now, Wednesday, model cities is meeting. And they're going to put through some kind of program. And, you know, we're all going to get run out of here eventually. Now, I put a proposal together that people that want to be together, people listening to this stuff and digging it, People that's got it in their hearts that want to be together. Be up here Wednesday. We go down and we stop that meeting. All through the city, there's $38 million supposed to be split up to bring poor people out of poverty. What the hell have they bought? What have they done? Not a damn thing. These goddamn people that own businesses here in Uptown are sitting down and we can't sit on those consoles. We can't tell where the money ought to go. 
Damn it, we ought to go down there and stop them and piss on the money and do the neighborhood right. Well, if we can't do it, they oughtn't to do it. Wednesday will be for confronting the model cities. And you better be together because the pigs are in here right now and they know what we're going to do, you see. When you do it, do it right, but don't do it at all. We've done something with them. Yeah, but now we're going to get on the floor if we get over there. Wow. I'll see you Monday night. I'll see you Monday night. It takes time, and if you expect uptown to change overnight, you've got a guest coming. It's and if you think this council... It's time to change them for the rich. Right, right on! The motion now says that we will present the program that they have accepted. We'll have our day. Right on! You're not using up for the poor. The people in the audience will be heard when there's not a council member speaking. Well, I reserve my time. You know, for a long time, we've been coming here and we've been quite little children. Community people, they ask for citizen participation. I want to show you where citizen participation goes and how it's voted up on. Except those parts are presented tonight, they're voted on, and not only voted on, we was going to just ask vote up or down, but passed. I'll guarantee you that this council will not be met with no more, and this council will not meet again, and there's 200 more citizens that's meeting at Threshold tomorrow night to see that ended. Your remarks, number one. Number one. The remarks are, are very much out of order. say nothing, let Bob set it up with him, and then we're going to ask him to go back out again. This is a community relations sergeant. I want them to talk and get it over with real quick to set up a meeting. Hey, Bob, coming in. Take it easy. <laughs> How are you? My name is Bob. Yes, sir. Sergeant Kramer. I'm working with the Committee on Police Brutality in Iraq. <laughs> We, the United People, and we, the United People, would like to arrange a meeting with the police department. We already discussed that. We want to meet, really meet, and discuss some things that happen in the community that you know are real and that people here can vouch for that it has been happening. We're trying to build some rapport with the, with the police district here. Right. Build some rapport with the people, if not with the officers on the street, at least with the officials in, inside the departments, whereas maybe they can pass some sort of 
rules or policies to stop this, 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 this wanton harassment. Sir. So like, I think that I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Geary here to, uh, to announce our next meeting, whatever night that would be, sir. And and you can have one. Well, we find out when we're going to have this meeting. Monday right. night, right here. Right on. We're going to show them how to have have a real council meeting here. The first hour is with the pigs. The next hour is with the people. And the streets belong to the people, and not the pigs. Remember that. I know different, and I know your reason of why that you've been hollering and the things that you've been saying. And I talked to Sergeant Kramer the other day and I talked to Commander Conley and they both told me they wasn't aware of what was happening on Wilson Avenue. And so here tonight, we're the, here to make them aware of it. We want to have a good community, a good neighborhood, and furthermore, we intend to have a good neighborhood and a good community. Now, I'm going to turn the meeting over at this time to the chairman of the Police Brutality Committee, as what we call it. I would like to be able to drop the part brutality and let it become just the police committee, and hopefully something can be worked out here tonight. I give you the chairman of that committee, Mr. Bob Lee. Personally, one thing happened to me Monday night as I walked in the street, but that was the past. So I think Jumbo right now can release some of Okay, would all the young patrons get up here and stand in front? <laughs> this is about half of the group of guys that's, that I'm working with in Uptown. And we like to say that we're not a gang. And we've got a four-point thing going. One thing we're for is better housing for people in the neighborhood. Another is stop of the police harassment. Another is, is trying to end urban renewal from kicking people out of the neighborhood. And the fourth thing is to have better relations between people in, in the neighborhood who doesn't know each other. We have to help the community is the best way we know how. And that if, if our guys get arrested, we're going to try any way possible to stop it. I'd like to hear your comments. Well, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on taking the title of the Young Patriots. Uh, to me, that has a connotation of meaning patriotic. And I like those words. They're kind of unique these days. Now, there's nobody in this room that knows anything about being poor any more than I do or anything more about your plight than I do. I ask you to keep your questions constructive. I ask you to keep the meeting orderly. And I assure you that something will come out of it. A week ago today, six young men, along with myself, were walking down Broadway Street. We just left, left a meeting at Junebug's house. We were detained for two hours, I would say six or seven fellows walking down the street. So I'd like you to uh, uh, maybe define, like, is, is six guys on the street considered a gang or at this time of night? First of all, I will concede that police officers generally are a little prejudicial in regard to any citizen who perhaps doesn't dress or look like the way they should think, they think people should look. Now, I certainly appreciate your plight being a Negro, but it would be silly for me to stand here tonight and make excuses for my men or try, try to make you feel a little better by saying my men were wrong. It would be wrong both ways. We have to know some of the background. There may have been a robbery there an hour before, 15 minutes before. There may have been a crime wave before. There may have been burglaries. There may have been... Uh, Jack Rowling, so many things. We're trying to better things. We're trying to, to bring out in the police officer, we're trying to teach him that everybody isn't like him. Sometimes things happen that I don't know about. 
but I will make it my business to know about them, if you will bring it to my attention. The question is not uh, a red squad. Every meeting that's been held in Thresholds Hall has been observed by the red squad and photographed because I've watched it. I want to know what the purpose of this is. The red squad? They take your pictures just as these people are taking my picture here. No, it's not quite that uh, well, apparently it was. Uh, you saw it and other people have seen it. There are those units within the police department or any law enforcement unit that uh, have as their function the investigating and looking into organizations that perhaps are a little on the suspect side or have uh, revealed themselves uh, in such a way as to be a little bit questionable. Who defines that? Perhaps we do. Is this the one, Bob? Is this the one the police officers took off of you? Now, this was a Nixon Agnew button, but we didn't have money to buy a button, so we painted over. The Oriental people, the Spanish people, the white people, the black people, and the red people. Policemen have taken these buttons off somebody in this room. Yeah. Who? Off this young man. Well, I can't see whether that's right. That's completely wrong as far as I can see. Somebody that can come up and take a button off you for no reason whatsoever. Well, can I say something? Uh, I'm only 16 years old, and they throw me up against the wall and slap me a couple times, even in the cop station. For what, son? For what? I don't know. They come in my friend's house, they drag me to the police station. Two detectives take me out the hall and try to make me say things that I ain't. And slap me because I won't say that I ain't something. And then you expect me to come and tell y'all, you're going to have a squad car watching me 24 hours a day, because when they say that I say something to y'all about them knocking the hell out of me, then they say they're going to kill me. Can you have a squad car watching me 24 hours a day to make sure that they don't hire me? I've had them in a police station, and the police station take me in the back room and bang my damn head against the wall. Say, let me see how tall you are, and then crack my head like that. What did you do, sir? Nothing, nothing, not nothing at all. Just being in a friend's house, and they come in and take me to the station. It don't make no matter what you do. An officer's not supposed to hit. They say they're going to kill me if I, if I tell anything. They say they're going to kill me. They even tell me in the police station, if I catch you outside, I'm going to kill you, boy. And I can't, well, I, I can't walk down the street. For what reason did they bring you in? I, there's no reason. I'm sitting in a friend's house. Well, I just want the complete story. What was done, if it was done, was wrong. Nothing was done, but I don't. I want the complete story from yes, you. Yes, sir. I'll not just you. what happened. Uh, not just what we did wrong. I want to know what you did wrong that precipitated this. That's all. All right. Doesn't matter what you did wrong. I'll tell, tell you what I did. Complete story. It's not saying the complete story. I'll tell the complete story. It's wrong, and I conceded it's wrong. But why doesn't he tell the complete story? Let me talk, will you? The complete right. story. That's I was all. in a homosexual's house watching his TV set, waiting for his cousin to come back. His cousin's 17 years old. That should be a friend of mine. He's a homosexual. They come in and they try to make me say that I'm, I'm, that I'm a faggot, you know? All right, if you'll stay after, I will register your complaint and you'll find out that it'll be investigated okay, and you'll probably be treated properly. Uh, if uh, anyone here is harassed by any police officer, you know, we will you know, be sure to take his badge number down, his car number, and we will see this man. You know, we will see this man. And then I, I like to know, if we come to you with, you know, a badge number, a car number, and, and, and you find this, this officer to have really harassed one of the people here, like what would happen to him? Now, let's wait and see. I will send you complaints that we'll get from the neighborhood weekly. Any uh, harassment of young patriots to our political organization, you are taking on personal responsibility to see that it doesn't matter. Of course, I have to. I have to. This is my responsibility. In the past, the poor neighborhoods have been exploited by persons or person or persons who have been less than American. There's so many of these anti or, or anti-American uh, pink, uh, even red organizations. You know, I, I, I really resent the statement that you said that there might be some red or this kind of thing because I personally think that I'm as better or at least as good as an American as you are and I think that if there's anyone here in this audience who is not an American, I think you should point this out. I think the purpose of this meeting was to, in fact, accentuate that positive part, that here we are, Americans, red, black, yellow, white, with one goal in mind, to build a society. 
And this is why I regret you bringing up that fact that, we, that there might be some red taint here. I said the potential in a poor neighborhood is disproportionate than any other neighborhood for people being exploited by these types of people. How could I possibly say anybody in this room has any other feature than complete, pure-blooded American? How could I say it? I don't know a person in this room. Yes. I remember the young patriots, and I'm not going to run out a long line of particular harassments that have been thrown up against people, but just use one to clear up a point you made, which is probably the strongest point we've been talking about tonight. And that is, I've been in the house of uh, Southern white people, and I've heard policemen, pardon me ladies, say, throw them up against the wall, say, you fucking hillbillies, what you got on you, and this kind of thing. And all I want to say is, when you talk about tolerance, we're not tolerating this, we're angry. A hundred years ago, this flag which I wear on my cap represents the Confederate States of America. We was beat down. And we beat down people for a hundred years. And we know what it's like to beat down people. We beat down people hard. We all getting ourselves together. We're angry about it because we're all beaten down today. And we're going to be out on the streets and we'll be helping you if you want our help. And it's not the matter we communists, we this or that and the other. We're just folks who are trying to get things straight in our community. Is that clear enough? Do you, does anybody here believe what they had to say? They asked me what I think of the police officers now. I think they were just feeding us a bunch of shit tonight to keep them anything getting started. You tried your best, man. You about the community, you're not going to let them stop you. Hey, Bob, we can't let this happen because they ain't, they're going to let us just go down like we was a long time ago where they can start this shit up again, but we have to go through it again. We'll keep on going through it, through it, through it. We ain't never going to get nothing done. There's one thing we've got to do. we got to get out. we got to reach a lot of people, man, because if we don't, we're going to get picked off easy. So we're going to get picked off quick. And we got to get people to back us up and show them that they're backing us up so they get off our backs. That's right. They don't want us to build ourselves up like the Panthers did. Because they're afraid that if people are going to keep building themselves up, that we're all going to get together and we're going to get back what we want done. These 200 buttons here with Panthers are going to start wearing them now. See? They're going to try to prevent this every way they can by acting like our friends. That, that pig almost had me convinced tonight, man. He did. I started even believing this shit. See, that's his job. I know that. I know that. That was his job. One of the right. most important things that he was worried about him now, because that was one stage we went through the night, talk with him. Now the whole thing now is community. You get in touch with everybody in this community. Put pamphlets in the stores, even hand one to a police officer on the corner. Anything to get them in. Well, what if it don't happen? What are we going to do? We're going to fight them or what? I mean, we're what fight them. We're jerking the community in, man. The community's going to fight them. We're going to be part of the community. I mean, how are we going to fight them? Guns? Don't get hung up on that. No. They ain't going to stop packing our heads, man. It's a thousand people up here, Jack. We'll get it to her later, man. Later? When you win later, later, I'm going to be dead. I'm going to be dead. You land in your no. grave. You land in your grave, and other people can still be fighting. You ain't got I might, shit, man. I might, I might, I might land in my grave, but I'll feel good huh? to know that How I fought for my fucking land. land. I ain't going to be, you know why? Because I'm going to say, motherfucker, I'm going to fight for that shit. And pretty soon, motherfucker, if they ain't gonna give it to me, if they ain't gonna give it to me, we gonna fight the motherfucker. Man, I'm gonna walk down a motherfucking street and them fucking cats mess with me, I just go, hey, bam, man. motherfucker, this is why. Yeah, that shit is out. You, yeah. Yeah. Well, if I got 15,000 guys behind me, motherfucker, it's gonna be a different scene. You can think the best things you want when you die saying I'm a hard motherfucker, but I'm dead, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be a hard that's motherfucker. That's it, man. That's it, motherfucker, man. Hey, I'm I, I met this cat from now, man, when, when I got out of high school, he fucking joined up, man, went to now for four years, man. He come back, he said, man, I don't care how big you are, big, hard Hard ass motherfucker, he said. You watch them cats go over there, man. Some a hard motherfucker. He said, them old cats are dead, crying, man. man. Them cats are dead, man. Some little cat go, bam, you a dead motherfucker, hey, man. man. You can be the hardest cat in the world, man. Some cat shoots you, you a dead motherfucker yeah, right then and there. Like you ain't crying, 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 cr
You're fucking dead, and that's it. You can die a hero. You're still a fuck. We got a plan. Fuck it, man. When you're dead, it make no difference, man. You're fucking hunting. We got a plan until we win, not so we die, man. Fuck them. I don't dig die, man. You have a group that goes. I'm gonna die sometime, and that's why I say it ain't no sense of working all my fucking life for bullshit, because I know I'm gonna die. Ain't no sense to put up with a horse shit they put on you all the time, because I know I'm gonna die. That's what it's about, man. Ain't no sense of waiting, so I'm gonna be 95 years old, drive my XKE. Fuck them, man. I want it now, because it's mine.